Hello, this uh, video is of second session of portrait drawing. And as you have already learned during the session to draw this Buddha face, I'm giving a revision of the same. So we'll continue with this. So for drawing this face, first you need to mark here on the upper part and we'll leave some space as you can see here on top section. Then we'll mark one more dash over here. Now, after that, we'll mark one more point and that will be a point is like for nose from head to nose. So here I'm showing you that how much space you need to live from the base. So here we'll mark that point little bit up and down slightest variation is completely okay but the reason of marking this space is like you need to understand how much bigger your head will be hmm? so the size of the head should be according to the size of paper it shouldn't be too big or too small now once you're done with marking we'll draw a semicircle this side A little bit distortion is okay, but try to make it as round as you can. We'll follow the same process for opposite side. Initially, keep your line slight. Once you think it is good, you can make it a little bit more clear but do not dark this circle too much. Okay. This is just for the suggestion. This is just our construction lines. Once our portrait is complete, we'll erase all these lines. Now, as you can see how much space is there on sides. So do not leave much space. Try to cover your paper. After this, will mark one line in middle so this line help us to create symmetry as our face is symmetrical on both the side both the sides are equal so that's the reason we mark a center line now once you're done with this as you already learned in the previous session where you have drawn a front face. So we are following the same process of drawing in this. So the basic structure will almost see. Now we'll draw a curve from starting from here and we'll connect this curve this side. So both the points of this curve are in a line. Keep this curve light, do not dark it much. As soon as we draw the curve, this circle transform into a sphere, which is a form. So that's the reason whenever you draw a portrait in any direction or in any angle, draw curves, not a straight line. Curve help us to create the form, to create the volume in that face. If you draw a straight line, it appears to be flat. So that's the reason always use curve as our body is comprised full of curves and not straight lines. Now, once we're done with this, we need to define the line of nose. So here, we'll draw two lines and try to make them symmetrical. Okay, see how uh, apart they are from the middle line. We'll mark this curve. You can make them darker. That is okay. Just try to understand the distance between them. Do not draw them too close. Okay. Now, after this, we'll draw a circle here. Okay. This part. 
he the width of this circle is similar okay the size of the circle is similar to the distance between the these two lines hmm? see so this will be the tip of the nose now after this we'll draw eyes for that we'll mark two dot one this side and another one this side again mark both the dots at a similar distance from middle line now we need to draw eyes <clears throat> so as you learn in a previous lesson that distance between the two eye is equal to one eye so the distance between two eye distance between two eye is similar to one eye so we'll mark one dot over here and we'll follow the same this side okay now uh, buddha's eyes to uh, beautify to beautify the character of buddha the eyes uh, are created in an elongated manner they appears to be more like a fish shape hmm? so what we do first we'll draw the upper curve which is the skin fold on both side we do the same now to define lower eyelashes watch here how i'm marking that curve turn it just which is more like a wave follow the same process this side as i mentioned earlier keep your lines quite light first once you think it is good you can dark them try to avoid using eraser again and again <clears throat> always use light lines and then dark them after this we'll draw one more line to define upper eyelashes as buddha appears to be a symbol of peace and calmness and always presented in a meditation pose so for that the eyes are quite closed so what we do we'll draw one more curve like this follow the same process this side now after this we'll define nose to define the nostril so the width of the nostril is similar to the distance between the eyes so here we'll draw two curves one this side and one this side after this we'll draw a wave line starting from this point we watch here and we'll end it this part see the line is not connected to curve of nostril they are little apart so to make that difference never connect the line of your nostril curve of your nostril with the middle line unless the face is uh, observing two down if it is too down then you can connect the line if it's not that down and little bit in front then the line will not connect it after this <clears throat> will uh, define jaw to define the jaw line what you need to do will measure this part will mark a point over here as buddha is buddha's face is facing little bit down side so what you do we'll just move this mark little bit upside just measure this take this measurement over here mark one line shift this mark little upside and then connect this curve as buddha's representation is quite gentle so we'll use curve jaw not a um, angular or muscular kind of jaw line now to define lip first we need to mark two points
see the lips are quite white from the nose. Then we'll draw a curve to define smile. Then one more curve here on upper part and we'll connect this here. One curve here below for lower lip and do not connect your lower lip with corner of your lips, okay? Just draw a curve in this manner. Now, after this, we'll define ears to the uh, for to define ear. First, we need to mark the point. So, ears will be in line with eyebrows. Let's start in line with eyebrows and end till nose in line with nose. Okay. So, what I do start a curve from this side, bring this line down. Till here, as Buddha's ears are appears to be elongated hmm, to define uh, his knowledge. So what we do, we'll just bring this curve a little bit more down and turn it back. We follow the same process on opposite side. Bring this curve down. And turn it back. Now we'll define the forehead. To define forehead, I'm taking the measurement from this point. And as Buddha is facing downside, the forehead appears to be quite small. So I'm just shifting my mark a little bit down. Now we'll define hairline. So watch here, move your curve upside and then again, bring it down. Follow the same process on opposite side. Move your curve upside. Then bring it down. After this, we'll define hair bun. To define bun, see here, we have already marked so just mark two points here on head, make them both symmetrical, and then just connect this using a curve. After this, we'll define eyebrows. Nothing much, we just need to extend this curve. This side also. and a circle here between the eyebrows. This is known as Urna, U-R-N-A. Is a symbolistic representation between the eyebrows to define Buddha's character. Okay, now uh, we'll draw circle to define hair. The kind of hair I do have. So this is, so we'll keep drawing such circles throughout the head, uh, try to maintain the size, draw them lit quite lighter, do not dark them much. We'll draw the circle on both sides and continue it all over the head. Just like this, keep drawing the circle. Now, We'll add one more circle here. And with this, the drawing is complete. We'll remove the lines of measurement that we have drawn. We'll remove this middle line. So make your drawing look more clear. So practice the same as your homework and also observe your face in front of the mirror and try to draw it. This activity is called self-portrait. So face, observe your face in front of a mirror and draw yourself. That will be an interesting activity.